my name is Nick Lloyd and I do Spanish Civil War tours in Barcelona. This is my second video on different stories connected with the Spanish Civil War and this one's related to the Battle of the Ebro. The Battle of the Ebro was probably the biggest and bloodiest of all the battles of the war. Something like 35,000 people on either side lost their lives. We don't actually know the true figure. Uh, the context of it was in um, April, March, April 38, Franco launched an offensive through Aragon, which drove all the way to the Mediterranean, to the Valencian coast, and split the Republican territory into two, and then began to threaten the then capital of the Republic, Valencia. And partially a result of this, but also as a way of trying to convince the Western democracies that the Republic was not a spent force and should be supported militarily, in vain as it proved, uh, they decided to launch a counter-offensive, a massive counter-offensive Republic. And most of the offensive took place in this bend in the river here, as you can see, on the river where they crossed uh, the end of July 38. And the battle was waged principally in the summer of 38 and was over by November of the same year. And by the end of it, the, the back of the Republican army is frankly broken and it was just a question of time. And the Republic finally collapses in April 39. But I want to talk about a something specific about that battle, although true to other battles of, of the Civil War, related to this piece of limestone. Um, I recently visited uh, the, the umpteenth time, the battle sites, and this time I was taken around with a friend of mine called Andreo, who works, who has, who has a tour company called Terrenia, and he's a real expert on the Civil War in the Ebro area, the battle sites. He does tours in Spanish and Catalan, and he's great. Uh, he took me to a few different places I've never been before, including um, a command post, um, probably can command post, overlooking the town of Corbera, Corbera de Ebro, which is here, so it's somewhere around here. Um, and today, it, it's, uh, it's basically it's been overgrown, it's a pine wood, uh, and we're walking through this, it's full of uh, badger and boar tracks I found road deer uh, and there's wildflowers around but at the time of course it was it, it, it wouldn't have been overgrown and there's a series of trenches which have to an extent have been restored um signposted i say trenches we're, we're not talking about trenches as we might think of in the first world war which were in the in, in france and flanders where they were very deep in that soil here this is this was a limestone massif a limestone massif so at most they were half a metre, a metre deep, and in most cases half a metre, and they had to build them up as parapets with rocks. And as the when the, when 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 the bombs and the shells rained down, um, often the limestone or the, would be hit and would fragment into other pieces and also kill. And in fact, Manuel Tagüeña, who was the commander of the Republican Army at the Ebro, and often considered one of the most competent of all the Republican commanders, he remembered this in his memoirs, um, that the hell created by these fragments of rock. And uh, I found this one, actually, because the whole area is like pitted with little craters, uh, from, presumably from shells. Uh, I found this one inside a crater, a piece of limestone, and um, I showed it to a friend of mine, Issa, who's a professor of geology at uh, Barcelona University, and she says it's probably about 200 million years ago, at the time when when the Terra Alta was a sea. Um, Terra Alta is where most of the battle took place. And she said, but it's strange because, you know, limestone just doesn't shear like this. It doesn't break like this naturally. And something violent's happened to this, and clearly it's been hit by a shell or by a bomb. And the limestone that the, the geology is killing and the geology is killing in another way as well because one of the great problems both sides particularly on the republican side at the battle of the ebro had fighting in these um incredibly steep um rugged limestone hills was the provision of water because there is virtually no groundwater in the area 
because it's limestone. And of course, limestone filters, the water filters through the fissures. So people were, so people were being supplied at night. They were desperately trying to get the water up um, so somebody, people would have a, have a drink in the terrible t hot temperatures, plus 40 degrees that summer. And people were also succumbing from thirst. And as I said, the geology of the Ebro area was also killing. Thanks. Anyway, that's the second video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and there'll be another one, I hope soon. Thank you.